Earth Mama is a very interesting and notable urban drama, if just because even though you recognize that men play a role in a lot of the issues and trauma within the lead characters' lives, they aren't really around. And with that, it leads to a very interesting experience as she followed this young pregnant woman who's clearly experienced quite a few things. Yet despite all that, her focus is moving forward despite the personal and external obstacles in her path. To summarize the film, Gia is 37 weeks pregnant with her third child and it's only been around a year since she lost her first two kids due to Child Protective Services taking them. Now, she does have a job, but unfortunately she does live with her sister who is a drug dealer and Gia herself does have an addiction problem. But in order to get her kids back, she's doing classes, going to meetings, and is trying to do everything she can to get her kids back in the gen generational trauma that she's going through like her peers and maybe create the kind of life that her kids are worthy of. However, she doesn't have her parents around. Her sister's not providing much beyond a roof over her head and it's not necessarily one her kids can live in. So Gia doesn't necessarily have a stable village. She does have a friend in this girl named Trina, but Trina's religious beliefs kind of complicated her relationship with Gia, especially the guilt um, part of it all. So that's not necessarily someone that Gia can rely on. And yes, there is this person named Mel who hangs outside of Gia's apartment, but Mel got her own stuff going on since her mom recently died. So she's not somebody that Gia can necessarily lean on. And it's not clear that Gia is really in the place where she can be that shoulder to lean on as well. Now, there is a woman who's an adult named Miss Carmen, who's nice. But based off of some things that Trina said, she is not sure if Miss Carmen's trying to help her be a better person and get her kids back, or if her focus is just trying to help other couples potentially get and raise Gia's third child. And the lack of ability to trust Miss Carmen is really tough for Gia because she so badly needs a stable adult to give her guidance, perhaps now more than ever. So what is very notable to me is that when it comes to men in Earth Mama, they play such a minimal role. They're not a strong factor in anyone's story. I mean, don't get me wrong. We know they exist, but outside of a man who, with his wife and daughter, are looking to potentially adopt Gia's kid, no other man is really pretend no other man is prominently featured. This creates this wonderful journey for Gia where you don't see men get blamed or used as a scapegoat for anything. There isn't the bad father, there isn't Gia dragging the father of her kids or anything like that. In many ways, you can see that, yes, the men did these women wrong, including Gia, but none of them can really afford on focusing on what they did, but rather they have to focus on what they can do for themselves and their kids. And I would like to add into this. On top of the men not really playing the villain role that you would expect in the play, they're not the savior or hero either. And on top of that, we don't get that one guy who's supposed to be different who Gia maybe has feelings for. She may work around some decent guys, like the one she works with at the Photoshop, but she ain't got no feelings for that boy. <laughs> they cool and all, but she's not crushing on him, not talking to him. I mean, talking about him to Trina and all like that. That's just a co-worker, plain and simple. And it makes for, it, it makes for such a different experience since, at least for a lot of the shows and films I watch, to have it where the woman is not like dragging any type of man who's been in her life, saying that they ain't shit and all that, and just really owning that they might have done what they did, but I'm not gonna let that define me. It's 
it's a different pace and it's really interesting to watch. But with that said, as another highlight, it's also interesting to see that when it comes to how Earth Mama operates, because there's no real male presence, that means women play the roles of both being obstacle supporters, somewhere kind of neutral. And I would even say it tries to make it clear that nobody is trying to be a villain here. For Gia, they could either range in being obstacles or else just different perspectives. Perspectives. Like, for example, Trina is somebody who can be considered potentially an adversary or someone who can cause issues. But at the same time, you can't say because Trina is more religious than Gia that makes her a bad person. When it comes to Trina, her faith is because she's been let down so much that she needs some existential force to be looking after her. She needs to believe that there is a God, potentially angels and all that, somebody beyond humanity who really gives a damn about her existence and the existence of her kids. Because without that, how is she supposed to function? How is she supposed to get up and still do everything that she's expected to do. And yeah, it is unfortunate that she judges Gia and any mother that would give up her kids, but she doesn't just use religion to justify it, but as you might have seen in the trailer, she brings up the idea of how these kids lose their identity, their culture, what can happen to them when they're not raised by their parents. And I mean, it's not the perfect justification, but at the same time, you get it. You see the humanity of her way of thinking, and she's not just stuck in this dichotomy of either being somebody who's bad or good. She lives very much in that gray line area. And I'll even say when it comes to Carmen, as much as she may know how to speak in hushed tones and maybe manage herself and maybe Gia in terms of the emotions that both are dealing with, she isn't perfect. There is a chance that what Trina was saying about her in terms of how she tries to get girls and women to give up their kids for adoption, there could be some ulterior motive where she gets paid for it and maybe she just doesn't see it that way. Or maybe she thinks that rather than have a kid, especially a black kid get raised by somebody who has addiction problems, financial problems, whatever, she'd rather they be raised in some way that they can have all the access to things that they should have maybe while judging the woman, but judging them privately. It's it's hard to say, but when Miss Carmen does kind of hold Gia accountable for something, you can, a part of you can say maybe that's how she truly feels and she's not giving Gia the grace and all that, but let's not dance around it. Gia's an addict. She, I think, does crack heroin, something like that. And she even has a moment where she is tempted to do it while pregnant. Because her sister is a drug dealer. She has all the stuff around her and it only tempts her more to use, especially as things get hard. But, again, there's this desire to not really label someone as a villain, but someone with a different perspective. And depending on whose perspective you're looking at, Yes, you can potentially see this person as an adversary or just somebody who doesn't want to sugarcoat stuff and hold you accountable for the stuff that you do or the decisions that you did, could, or are making. And it's really wonderful to see, but as we're going to the next highlight, it also kind of brings a sense of secondhand guilt, if not anxiety. And I say that because Earth Mama is about an hour and 37 minutes, give or take. And it's not a movie that tries to just thrust onto you some type of sympathy or feelings for Gia by just noting traumas or anything like that. This is not that kind of movie. Gia's life is the core of the film's success and it wants you to build a connection to her in a genuine way. It wants you to understand her, emphasize with her, and really take on that she is about to make a very difficult decision. One that 
taking note of all her experiences and the people she knows, her kid getting adopted by strangers, and maybe those strangers doing something, or else that kid maybe ends up in foster care, taking on the fact that you put them in that situation rather than, rather than raised them, that can cause anxiety and cause issues since, yes, it's going to be an open adoption, but you can't just drop in and check on your kid whenever you want to. So bad enough when you do something to your kid, and mind you, I don't got no kids, but bad enough when you do something to your kid and that causes them trauma or issues, but now somebody else did because you decided to give them up that you couldn't handle them or what have you. That's a lot of stuff to try to process on a day to day. And then you talk about the guilt and all that. I mean, especially when you consider that one of the reasons why G is even considering giving up her third child is because she's trying to get the other two back. In order to get the other two back, she needs to get herself together and trying to manage this new kid and, and then get back to others while living with her sister who's doing well, not doing drugs, but selling drugs and also packaging them. It's all that Gia has is this little job that's maybe making minimum wage, so she can't really move out and really take control of her life right now. That's a lot to think about. And I mean, and really doubling down on the whole guilt thing, imagine if she got her older two children back, got cleaned up and everything. There's still this child out there that she left behind her to get this kind of life and how does that child feel about that this child who granted from the family that we meet that likely is going to take care of this kid the kid could probably have a very good life but they still wasn't raised by their mama their mama still gave them up in a way that they can deem selfish so that she can get her life together and take care of the older siblings while leaving them behind and even just talking about it again, it's not something that necessarily makes me want to cry or anything, but it feels like such a weight in my brain to try to process all this and even live with it. And I'm just talking about for a movie, for a fictional character. So imagine actually living that kind of life, which leads to what is an on-defense topic for us. And that's just, there can be times you may wish you knew more because one of the things Earth Mama doesn't do is it doesn't answer the who, the how, the where, the what, the when. You do not hear about the father of Gia's children in this. They don't show him. They don't explain what happened to lead to Gia being single. Only thing that's established is that she has trust issues. The same goes when it comes to her parents. What happened to them? Why is Gia living with her sister? What relationship does she really have with her sister beyond just living with her under the same roof? It's not really gone into. The way that Earth Mama operates is that it's not going to catch you up. It's not going to explain stuff to you. It's very much about going forward. And like a lot of people, they're not trying to dwell on their past and all the issues and stuff they went through. And have those conversations with the person that they've been friends with for months, years, maybe more. Just so that the audience can know what's going on. That's not Gia's life. She has more than enough stuff she has to prepare for going forward that she can dwell on the past. And the present is already taxing enough to even try to stop and look over her shoulder to try to figure out how that got here. She don't got time for it. She ain't got patience for it. And life is way too hard to even think she has a moment to just leisure in the past and take a moment to reflect on it. No. And yes, is it unfortunate that you don't get to understand how she got to this point? Absolutely. But probably like me, you've seen more than enough shows, movies, and probably know a good enough amount of people similar to Gia where you can fill in the blanks. Overall, it's while Earth Mama may leave you wondering about Gia's backstory and many of the characters in general, the way it moves forward makes it so, like for many, you can see that Gia wants it to be that the past is the past. And while the past and the people in it do have some influence over the trajectory of her life, she doesn't want to use that or allow it to be any type of excuse. I would say that she wants to hold herself accountable on the work that she's done and even the slip ups that she's made. 
because she has moved on. She's removed that person or those people from her life. And the only way that that person or people can continue to have power over her is if she lets them continue to have some type of influence, some type of ability to be a voice in her head. And she can't allow that if she wants to truly gain some sense of autonomy and watching her do that is just a wonderful sight to see and because the film doesn't allow distractions of men either in a positive or negative role it allows you to have such a notable singular focus on this lead character that i feel like you'd be hard pressed to find something similar either in theaters in a tv show or anything outside of maybe the deep indie chasm that is YouTube, Vimeo, and etc.